I started working for CR in 1971 as a part-time instructor. 1981, I started working for CR for a full-time instructor and I retired in 2002. Uh, in the construction department, I taught woodworking and cabinet making and carpentry. I was teaching a class called Women in Construction. It was offered during the summer months. It was intended to be a transition for women that wanted to come into our, our carpentry program. We have several buildings still on campus that, that we built during the summer months. But I, I think I want to share this on the kind of on the funny side. On Thursdays, they were a different group of people. They were aggressive. <laughs> they challenged me. I was a teacher and they were challenging me. I, I took it the first Thursday and I took it for the second Thursday. But when they started on the third Thursday, I said, hey, time out. What's happening? You are a totally different group of people on Thursdays than you are the rest of the week. I want to know what was wrong. And they finally told me, on Thursday mornings, for two hours, they went to assertiveness training course. <laughs> and they were trying things out on me. I says, okay, I'm fair game, as long as it's part of the program. But I said, remember, I'm sensitive. <laughs> I attended in 1972, 73, 74, and a little bit in 75, and a couple classes in the 90s. This is a working man's college, the way I looked at it. I took welding. I took electrical, I took truck driving, I took sociology, psychology, advertising from the ever famous Dick Adams, a little bit of history, and a few other classes. And I graduated here in 1975 um, with honors, which kind of helped getting two A's in a truck driving class, so that kind of helped five <laughs> unit classes. But at two bucks a unit, who could pass up the deal? Dick Dart was my truck driving teacher. Dick Dart was kind of famous. But he was my truck driving teacher, and I remember my last, I, I went out and got a truck driver, I went and got my license, my truck driving job, but I hadn't finished my class. So on a Monday night, I had driving in the afternoon, I came out here and I had to go to San Francisco that night, so I parked the truck out here in the parking lot where we parked the CR trucks. We pulled in and I started to get out of the truck, and he goes, whose truck is that? He said, that's mine, I'm going to San Francisco. And he said, what do you mean? He says, I already passed my test, but he says, I want to get the credit, so I'm staying in so I can graduate. So after that, he, he says, he says, I'm going to be hard pressed not to give you an A for the class. You're working. <laughs> there is not a day goes by where I don't learn one of the skills that I was taught at CR, either advertising, psychology, still drive a truck, ever drove a truck my whole life. Um, I can't say enough about with the education I got. And at the time, I can remember very well, both my sister, one sister went to Humboldt, became a school teacher for 34 years. My other sister went to Chico and was a school teacher for 34 years. I was the youngest, and when it came time for me to go to college, my dad said, you know, I spent everything on your sisters. He says, wherever you can go to school and you can afford, you go ahead and go. So I came to CR because I could afford it and did great here, and I, and I appreciate everybody that made that happen. My older sister, Peg, and I both were here after high school, and then we both worked at the, the library. Oh, you did? Yeah, and then I also worked on the grounds. Uh, in the summertime. I remember being around, you know, Vietnam vets, being around housewives, and then kids, you know, my age. I really like that. Oh, and standing in line. We had to um, bring our sleeping bags and stand in line and spend the night to get classes. We'd, yeah, over at the, um, over at the PE building. Yeah, yeah we, I remember stand on the cement steps, waiting in line to get the classes we needed. So I'm sure they don't do that anymore. <laughs> but that was sort of fun. I had just returned from two years overseas in the Peace Corps. And this was in 1962 to 64 in the Peace Corps in Morocco. And um, I got a old Underwood typewriter, put it on the tailgate of my car, and drove up to up here for the first time. Never been here before. and. Um, I bumped into, and I was heard about what was going on here with the um, counseling center at, uh, at Berkeley, at UC Berkeley. And they said, well, if you want to get in the ground floor, then what you do is you go, and Gene Portugal's a great guy who was the president at the time. So that's how it all got started. I started out uh, teaching business, and that was not my cup of tea. I also had a degree in philosophy. So I ended up teaching philosophy and world religions. And in those days, um, world religion was on everybody's mind. 
because there were a lot of kids down in the city center, uh, LA and San Francisco, who wanted to know what's all this Hinduism business and what's all this Zen Buddhism stuff. And, and, uh, and so I was running these classes and they were jammed. It was a wonderful time to be in the classroom. One of the stories that I, I remember most is Jean Portugal being here and being so proud of these wonderful buildings and this beautiful campus. And it was ironic that there wasn't a redwood tree on this property when they got it. Um, right. that, that changed. Um, and, but during the construction process, as you can see in some of the pictures, the, the building site was, like any building site, was an absolute mess. And so some of the faculty had put up pictures of this construction site and all the devastation and the mess and, the, and had labeled it the same kind of stuff that uh, the um, uh, logging industry was claiming for uh, harvesting over mature hillsides and this sort of stuff. Well, the, the administration went ballistic and <laughs> were not happy. However, it turned out to be this gorgeous campus and here we are. CR, I think, as it has for many, many people, been a springboard. It allows us to, it gives us a flexibility, which I, I was given, to experiment, to uh, try different things, to change different ideas, to meet different people. It's been, and I think this is what education is all about and should be. And so, I, I, I it, it's been a wonderful kind of a springboard for me, and I think it has for many, many people. College of the Redwoods really opened my eyes up to so many wonderful discipline areas that, as a result, did make me change my major quite a few times. But I think it gave me a very well-balanced education. Because it was such an affordable college, it did allow me to play around with different different avenues and, and explore different career ideas and and so I don't think I would have had the luxury to do that at, a, at going straight into a four-year school and I, I didn't feel guilty about taking a few extra classes I experimented being a, a music major one semester which I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise because it just it wouldn't have been affordable instructors instructors knew my name you know and that is something that is, is really unique. I didn't have that experience at a four-year school. Um, I felt like I got much more interaction from my instructors in a small class, in a, in a small classroom. And I felt like the students tend, tended to interact more. And one thing I can say about College of the Redwoods that was different from other colleges that I attended was that the students here were very motivated and engaging. And I think that in itself is a, is a really great reason to choose a college like College of the Redwoods. I, I've worked for CR from 2002 until 2013 and I worked in the IT department in the, the technology that was used, the quality of the computers, the style of the network, uh, the speed of the internet connection was a huge change from almost nothing to a fairly decent capacity. Um, also the distance education and a lot more uh, remote classes and things like that. So, yeah, it was a wonderful time to have been here, absolutely. Yeah, an earthquake or two, I experienced a few of those in the basement of the old admin building. Not a fun place to be during an earthquake when you don't really know how big it's going to get. So, um, it was exciting, those moments. Yeah, yeah. It makes a wonderful sarcophagus. I just wasn't ready to move in yet, that's all. <laughs> Um, I've also taken classes out here. I've, I've taken a landscape design class and a couple of solar energy classes. Um, most recently took a, film, a filmmaking class and that was wonderful. Um, uh, the instructor there kept me very interested the whole way through. I learned some great techniques. was part of some group projects there that were just wonderful and really got to play. I already kind of knew the technology side of things, which is uh, unusual for most students there. But I didn't know the, the creative side, the art side. Right. So that's what I learned about and all that. Um, so I was able to help other students with their techie sure. stuff, and they helped me quite a bit with the artistic, creative side of things. Well, beyond, beyond the satisfaction of being involved in the technology and, and really making a difference to the students and to the employees here, 
um, the feeling of community, really. That's why I'm here today, just to still be part of this. And so I find it's very, very meaningful. I had always heard about that, that the college was not just a school, it was a community. And it's absolutely true. It's, I found that more and more as time's gone on. Yeah. And I attended from 1985, fall of 85 to 88. I graduated in 88. I was very quiet, very shy, afraid of my own shadow. When I came to CR, my mom told me, whatever you do, you're in a new place, a new setting, nobody knows you, they don't know what you're like. Hold your head up high, make sure you say hi to at least one person every day, whether you know them or not. By the end of the first semester, I knew everybody on campus, student, teacher, maintenance, it didn't matter. I knew them. Everybody teased me. They thought I lived in the dorms because I was always over there. I live in Fortuna. I didn't live in the dorms. Everybody thought I did. They still think I lived in the dorms because I was always with them. So it was, it was, see, I was a great experience. It was a good stepping stone. Mm -hmm. It sounds cliche, but it was a coming of age for me, I guess, you know, because I went from this quiet, shy, whatever, to this outgoing, fun, I guess, person is how I would describe myself. All through your two years? All through my first two years here. You know, um, I loved it. CR was really a good, a good thing for me. Uh, all the teachers were great. They didn't let the fact that I was Bill Henry's daughter get in the way. They treated me like they would any other student that was either acting up or doing well or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, I had fun playing practical jokes. I, I just had fun with everybody, you know, it was, it was a good, ex just a really good experience. Uh, I started um, about 90, it was 96 when I came back here. I had uh, ruptured in a, my Achilles tendon and so I came back to school to, um, to you know, kind of, because I had nothing better to do because I was, you know, kind of immobilized, so I started here. I have quite a few um, memories and I had you know I designed these motorcycles through the machine shop classes and and um, you know and they went they were going to be a professional road racing motorcycle and so I had you know so I did a lot of work on those developing them here at CR and so I you know went around and basically my CR the CR logos on the bikes and and um, they're relatively famous it's a challenge, put it that way. Working for the College of the Redwoods is a challenge. It's always something different every day. You know, I never know what I'm going to do when I get up and come to work. I have no idea what the dates were, but I did spend 24 years on the board. And I think one of the only people that spent more time on the board was me was uh, Dr. Jerry Phelps, and he was about 32 or 33 years. A lot, a lot of building went on. Uh, the Del Norte campus, the Mendocino campus, uh, the library, other multiple buildings around here. We're standing in front of another one. We went through uh, some amazing seismic studies that uh, essentially said you couldn't build this campus again if you wanted to because it's an, it's an earthquake zone. And now they're approving more buildings. So. Uh, wonderful stuff. Oh, well, many positive memories. I, ma I made a lot of good friends here and got to know an awful lot of people, you know, from Max to the presidents, and everybody mattered to me. And uh, it was the intention of the board that we had to bring this school into the community and not wait for the community to come to us. And it, it was always wonderful to deal with the little issues that came up and uh, overcoming access problems, overcoming financial problems, and then sharing in the joys of graduation, whether it was a police academy or the graduations every spring, uh, and seeing all these nice people go on. And you know, this, this college has deep roots in the community. 50 years is a long time to be involved. Mm -hmm.